Go Jackers. What is going on, everyone, and welcome to Rec Talk. And if you saw the last live show, uh, we're so close to the season, I can even smell it. Um, now, today we're going to talk about uh, the wide receiver room, uh, unless you are you know, a diehard Georgia Tech fan like me and probably most of you watching this video. Um, you don't know how sneaky good our wide receiver room is panning out to be. Now, before we get into that, I want to give a shout out to all the members of the channel. Um, Jeff Brown, Jonathan McCrary, Mr. Rogers, Mike Doug 70 and T branch 227. All members of the channel. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your support. And, uh, there's three of you that aren't in the members only discord. There's a link for that, um, in the description of the video. Um, I will a lot of times talk behind the scenes stuff in the members only chat, thinking out videos and whatnot. So definitely check that out and be expecting more members only videos coming out soon. If you're not a member uh, and you would like to be, there's a there's a uh, button right below the title of the video you're watching. Just look under there. There's a join button. Uh, it helps. Uh, if you'd like to support the channel in other ways, there's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. Um, and if you don't uh, want to do that, liking the video, subscribing, turning on notifications doesn't cost a thing uh, and it helps us. So let's get into it. You know, first thing I like to do is what are we losing? Um, there's two, well, not just two, um, but two things that come on are on the top of my mind. Um, one, Leo Blackburn, it seems like is going to be out for the season. Um, had a what was an ACL knee injury that was pretty bad which is heartbreaking because he had a the exact same thing happened the year before where in the spring he had a season ending injury now in my opinion uh, he's the most talented wide receiver just raw talent wide receiver we have on roster this is a kid that come out of Westlake and he's very much like Kyle Pitts. He's kind of this tight end wide receiver hybrid that you're seeing a lot more of in college football today. Um, just heartbreaking to lose him. Maybe we'll see him toward the end of the year, depending on you know what his recovery looks like. But my heart definitely goes out to him. I hope you the best recovery. Um, but yeah, now the other big name we lose, Nate McCullum. We lose Nate McCullum to the garbage bag school that is the University of North Carolina. Um, now, they are a bunch of cheaters. I don't think they cheated here. I think they just offered them <laughs> a lot of money to come over and play for them, which you can do. You know, Nate was our leading wide receiver last year. He had 655 uh, yards. But this surprised me, only three touchdowns on the year. Um, so we lose our top wide receiver in the portal to North Carolina. Um, but we also lose our uh, two and third uh, leading re receivers, Malachi Carter at 342 yards, two touchdowns, and EJ Jenkins, who contributed 316 yards and three touchdowns. So seems pretty brutal, and it seems opposed to what I was saying about us having a very deep wide receiver wide receiver room to start the video. We lose our top three wide receivers. Uh, now, Malachi Carter remains. He was our fourth leading wide receiver with 225 yards. And uh, our fifth and sixth were both running backs. Hassan Hall, who um, graduated last year, and Dante Smith. Obviously, if you watch the running back preview, you know he's still on roster. And one of the kids that Rec is the highest on uh, or most interested in seeing this season. So, we lose all of that. What do we bring in, though? So, uh, first we have to talk about Josh Crawford. We bring in Josh Crawford as wide receivers coach uh, from Western Kentucky. He had been there for two years and um, has a very novel or, I guess, new, fresh concept on um, wide receivers. Uh, if you watch Western Kentucky film, there's a lot of spacing involved, more of an air raid style, uh, finding a way to slip in the hole of that zone um, and get the pass off. So it's going to be interesting to see how Josh Crawford melds in with 
our new offensive coordinator and Buster Faulkner and Chris Winkie. I think uh, it's only going to be uh, good things, though. Um, you know, our top our top six wide receivers account for uh, let's see, six eight touchdowns last year. Not good. We've got to improve. Uh, there. Josh Crawford, also another one of these kind of Georgia high school coaching, I wouldn't call him a legend, but is very well entrenched with the powerhouses, particularly in the southern part of Georgia. His experience at Colquitt, Valdosta High School, Lee County High School, Jefferson High School, that's up uh, in the north eastern part of the state, um, actually not far from Athens, uh, and Greater Atlantic Christian. And he, uh, in his experience, 11 years, uh, three high school uh, championships. So we need to add that to the list. Three more Georgia high school state championship rings on staff. Uh, I think this is an excellent hire for Georgia Tech. Um, We'll see how it goes this season. Now, as far as the transfers that have come into Tech, and not just at wide receiver, but at all positions, really started off with this young man, Chase Lane. Uh, Chase Lane is a redshirt junior, six foot tall, 193 pounds, out of Texas A&M. Now, if you've been under a rock, Texas A&M is a team that's had tons and tons and tons of pressure and expectation to perform well. Had the number one recruiting class. What was it two years ago? That the majority of it has <laughs> has left now. Uh, Chase Lane himself has two seasons of eligibility left. Not a ton of stats to report in his time at Texas A&M. 76 yards. 10.9 yards uh, a catch, but um, a kid that was a four-star talent out of the state of Texas, a kid that's very speedy, um, and and a lot of potential. We're gonna, we're going to see with most of these wide receivers here that have come in. Obviously, they're transferring for a reason, um, but kids that have not yet reached their potential, but I definitely think they can at the Georgia Institute of Technology now. Bringing in Chase Lane in the transfer class really opened the floodgates for bringing in other kids. One of them, Andre White, uh, linebacker who's a four-star. Uh, we talked about him in the linebacker preview, but you know, pivotal in trying to find a way to replace the re- production of Ace Ely and Charlie Thomas. Also, um, Braylon Oliver comes over in that transfer class. I want to say there was another kid that came over from Texas A&M. Oh, how could I forget, obviously, Haynes King. Uh, The very reason for this stark uh, quarterback battle, um, Chase Lane definitely recruits and helps bring over uh, Haynes King from Texas A&M, who was their leading uh, passer last year. Uh, But excited to see what Chase Lane can do. He's now finished up his uh, degree, I think, in business administration at Texas A&M and is now on campus at Georgia Tech. Next, we get a kid from Alabama. And this is a kid um, that I'm probably most excited uh, to see at this wide receiver room just because of the speed that he possesses, big plays that that you can get out of him. Um, But that I was kind of the most disappointed in from what I saw in the spring game. Now, obviously, I can't just judge a kid based what I saw in spring. Um, but had a lot of drop passes uh, during the spring that you know we got can't be doing that during the season. Uh, another kid that has two years of eligibility left come from Alabama. He's five foot ten, uh, true junior, one hundred and seventy three pounds. Uh, so he's you know uh, undersized wide receiver, but uh, an absolute speed demon. Uh, his junior year. Ran a 10 800 meter and his senior year ran a 10 and a half second 100 meter. Uh, so we're talking about approaching world class speed with this kid. Gonna see be very interesting to see, um, you know, as you add this type of downfield speed threat, what it might open up underneath and vice versa as we focus on hitting slant curls, curl flats, uh, not slant curls. Uh, Slant flat concepts and curl flat concepts, what it might open up over the top with a kid like this. And you'll notice as we go down the list, um, 
very balanced room too. We have the small speedy kid and then we have the larger big bodied kids as well. Um, speaking of larger big body kids, Dominique Blaylock from the University of Georgia comes over. He's a red shirt junior, six foot one, 203 pounds, also has two years of eligibility left. You know, a kid that was a four or five star wide receiver, depending on where you, what recruiting agency you look at. Um, and a kid that's really been plagued by injuries, um, had really a season ending knee injury in 2019 and then injured the same knee, uh, in 2020. Now he's a son of Mookie Blaylock, uh, guy who played basketball, uh, at the university of Oklahoma, I think from like 1987, 1989, uh, went on to have a really good, uh, NBA career, played for the Hawks, uh, you know, amongst a ton of other teams. But this is a kid um, that has the potential to be wide receiver one, uh, I think, at this season at Georgia Tech. A very balanced kid, uh, big-bodied kid, a fundamentally sound kid. So excellent addition to the Jackets with Dominique Blaylock. Uh, we also <laughs> – another – so this is one, two, three – Four. Our fourth transfer, Abdul Janay, uh, redshirt junior, really big kid, six foot three, hundred ninety-two pounds. Transfers from Duquesne uh, last year, accounted for five hundred seventy-nine yards and nine touchdowns. Um, you know, just another kid that adds balance uh, to to this wide receiving core. You're not going to be able to cover, you know, all these kids. Uh, six foot three is pretty tall. Um, I just think blends in well um, with this wide receiver core. Now, let's talk about kids that um, are already on roster. And the kid that will probably be um, wide receiver one, because you think, like, what do we have that could replace um, Nate McCollum? 655 yards, three touchdowns. Um, if you watch the spring game, it'll come as no surprise. Absolutely Malik Rutherford. Um, he's a similar build. Uh, and was just as electrifying during the spring game. He's five foot nine, 155 pounds. Um, just played his brains out uh, at at the spring game at wide receiver, all over the field. Uh, you know, catching balls, reversing field. Uh, Definitely a kid to watch out for. He'll definitely be in the starting rotation. I can tell you um, that. And uh, yeah, be interesting to watch this kid. I definitely think. Um, probably my pick for a guy that'll be wide receiver one. Then you also have young, young kid, uh, red shirt freshman, DJ Moore, uh, sea dog. And I actually talked with his dad for a good bit, uh, at the spring game. Um, you know, pretty high on this kid, another big kid. Um, uh, we're probably beefing up a little bit in the weight room, six foot, 188 pounds. It's a four star kid from Loganville and another kid that just, I don't think I saw him drop a ball in the spring game. Another kid that's just big-bodied, fundamentally sla fundamentally sound, um, a kid that I think could even work his way into the starting rotation uh, toward the end of the year. Uh, now we also have Avery Boyd, six foot two, two hundred thirty-two pounds. Also played very well during the spring game. Three-star, but evidently is a pretty speedy kid for two hundred. In 32 pounds with like a 4'4", 4, 4'5", 4, 4, 40 speed. And then I also want to mention James Blackstrain, redshirt sophomore, 6'2", 186 pounds, four-star ESPN um, 300 kid. Um, I haven't – surprisingly, I haven't heard a ton from this kid um, really in the back channels or I don't remember seeing him a ton uh, in the spring game, though maybe I'm – it's been a minute since I've watched the spring game, so I apologize if he was, you know, all over the place. Um, probably the kid I'm I, I'm most interested in seeing step up this year. I think he absolutely has the talent uh, to do so. Um, and a kid that could work his way in the start and rotation toward uh, the end of the year as well. Now, what freshmen do we have that I think – uh, we'll get some playing time this year. Eric Singleton Jr., 5'11", uh, 173 pounds. He's a three-star out of Douglasville, Georgia. Uh, in his career there, he, he accounted for 101 receptions, 1,567 yards, and 16 touchdowns. Another speedy kid, a little bit smaller. 
I, uh, but I think we'll see him uh, rotated in a, quite a bit this year. And also, don't sleep on this kid, Zion Taylor out of Norcross. Another three-star kid, six foot, 197 pounds, had uh, 113 receptions for 1,745 yards and another 16 touchdowns. Um, this is a kid that I just think has a good head on his shoulders, fundamentally sound, has all the skill to make the catches you need, to run the routes he needs. I think you'll see both these kids um, rotated in with frequency uh, throughout the season. Now, hard to say, um, I guess, name a starting lineup with these kids just because I don't know what type of offense we're going to run. I would think three wide receiver sets. Um, so I would definitely think Malik Rutherford would be wide receiver one, then probably Dominique Blaylock. And hard to say who would be at that third position or maybe in like a slot position. Um, Chase Lane, DJ Moore, Avery Boyd probably there. Um, it'll be interesting to see. But as you know, we always give a letter grade. How did, how did we do last year? How um, do I think we will do this year? If you look at stats, um, it looks like we we're pretty horrible uh, passing the ball and at wide receiver last year. And we did struggle mightily, though I think Malik, not Malik Rutherford, uh, Nate McCollum definitely pulled that whole position up, was able to do a lot of things, make plays for us that um, honestly won us ball games last year. I would say we were right at a C last year in wide receiver core. Maybe a little less than that after Leo Blackburn goes down. Um, this year, I think this is the position we take the largest strides in and make the most improvement in year over year. I think we actually elevate to a B plus here and potentially even better than that. Um, like I said, there's a lot of potential uh, in these kids that hasn't been realized yet. And I think that between Chris Winkie, the quarterback battle, Having Buster Faulkner as our OC and installing, as he calls it, Georgia Tech's offense, along with Josh Crawford, um, I think this could be um, one of the best, if not the best, wide receiver rooms in the ACC this year. It's going to be interesting to see. But tell me what you guys think. Is this um, a lot of potential that won't be realized. Does Georgia Tech make you know huge strides uh, at wide receiver? How do how do some of these transfers like Chase Lane, Christian Leary, Dominique Blaylock plan out? Tell me what you think, and uh, I'll see you guys later this week with the quarterback preview.